Hello everyone. So today we are going to explore create AI videos using Skyreels. This is a recent launched fine-tuned Hanyuan video model and it's now capable of image to video generation. Previously, I published another video talking about how to run this in a very basic way to get image to video working. Here, I've made some updates to the workflow where I've updated the versions of that image to video process. If you've checked out my previous videos or if you haven't, you can go check them out to learn how to set up Comfy UI first. My workflow here uses native custom nodes, not the Hanyuan video wrapper nodes, so it's pretty easy to get this set up and running. As you can see, the sampler customs are all native in Comfy UI, where I've also made a little change compared to what I had in the last video. Talking about this AI video model, the update includes GGUF quantizations. I've put this loader in here, and as you can see, I've also added a LoRa loader, which I discovered on Hugging Face. This helps smooth the image frame transitions between frames, making the generated video results look smoother. Therefore, I have these two results as outputs, like this fish tank image that I generated before using Sauna. If you check out my previous videos, I talked about NVIDIA Sauna, one of the lightweight diffusion models able to generate images like that. So. I'm using this as an example. I crop that into portrait dimensions, allowing me to generate only partially like a smartphone camera footage. But then, using the first sampling method, I usually got this kind of weird morphing output. When I use another second sampler, everything gets smoothed out, fixing most of the animation problems. I've also done another example, which is one of my previously generated images. You can see the camera movement isn't that clear in the first few seconds. When I use the second sampler, the effect improves a bit. This isn't an upscaled video, it's just using a very low resolution within 848 pixels to create this. So even though this video isn't upscaled, its resolution still improves a lot between what you see in this kind of pixelated result using one sampler to generate. So in my workflow here, I can show you guys how to do that. First of all, of course, what I just mentioned, applying the smooth in LoRa. Adding the model loader is up to your preference. If you want better, higher quality, you can use BF16, or if you're on a low VRAM computer, then I suggest using the GGUF quantized model, but then using Q8, this is the most acceptable quality for me. If you're using a lower quantization, there will be more data loss, resulting in a loss of quality in terms of video generation. Then we move down to here. As you can see, I've got two samplers. Well, I showed this sampling method in my previous videos when the first day of Skyrim launched. Right now, I've made a little improvement and updated this workflow to work better for denoising. This is not going to be one because the latent sampling image data here is coming from the first sampler group where we are receiving the latent image just like how you do in image generation for image to image. You pass the latent image data into the sampler. That's as simple as that. Then we have the first sampling group. This group is going to create the image as a base. So we'll have a very low quality pixelated image like this. But then when we have the second sampler, it will pass all that data and we'll have the latent image data pass to the second sampler group where we enhance the quality like this. So within that moment, the same frames we can see are at least well smoothed and have better motion. Also, all the objects in the video are getting better. This isn't upscaling yet, the upscalers are going to come in the last part of this workflow, or you can use other upscaling software like Topaz, which you can use to upscale the video or any other tool you prefer. So, not going too much into detail on the upscaling part yet, we're only focusing on how to create a video effectively. You know, without wasting time generating multiple times of image to video and still not getting a better result. Also, we have the image loader here. I put both images just for convenience. Sometimes I use the file path because I don't want to duplicate any other image in my Comfy UI input folder. And that's the thing you have to set. The resolutions for width and height. Mostly, I will set this by default to the same resolutions as Hanyuan Video. So you can just put this in with 848 width and the height is 480. That's the default for Hanyuan Videos. Then I just apply the same numbers here. We can take a look at these examples. For example, I got this image from one of our Discord friends, Mike, and then we can animate this one. 
I did one example and posted that, sharing it in Discord. It looks like this. This is the first try using two seconds. And then I have another second try, which is also two seconds. But this one's gonna have more motion, more magical feelings. It's turning around, and there's a creature here waiting for the magic spells. So we are going to animate this and see what we will have. And I'm gonna change the seed numbers here just to have another motion and try that out here. For the sampler case, the sampling method here, I prefer DPM PP2M more in the first sampling. This is better than Irula, but when we move to the second sampler, we are going to use Erler, and the scheduler is set as simple because we don't need too much creativity in the second sampling. We just need to refine the video quality. So therefore, this one is kept in this method and both image sampling groups I am setting at 20 steps. You can try other step numbers, of course. More steps will give you a better chance at higher quality. So let's try this one first. Also, the last step here, I'm adding the MM audio so that will create the sound effect. Text prompts are coming from the input text prompts in the first sampler, which goes back to the image to video group. We will have the text prompts right here. So let's wait for the generated result and we will see how that looks. Okay, so we got the generated result here. I prefer to go step by step in each group because video generation is not image generation. I don't prefer enabling all the groups and running each generation at once. Instead, my method is to disable each group step by step and go through them. If my first sampling group's output is not good, not acceptable, then of course, you can change other seed numbers, tweak some settings, and then generate again. But then, this example is pretty good. You see even the hands, from the right hand to the left, the transitions, and then the magic orb, the AI identified, is able to treat this magic orbs floating in the air and then transitioning to another hand. This motion looks okay, but since it's just the first sampler, we can of course do some enhancement on each of the details here. It can be a better way or something that can be enhanced. So what I did is the second part, I will enable this second sampler. And then we got another result based on the first video to do another second sampling. And you see the magic orb more. These orbs are getting more details when it zooms into the sides here. Let's pause this part from the front. And then the magic orbs are flying to the hands here. Yeah, we got more details instead. When you see the first video here, this is the first sampler generated video. Let's pause these frames and review frame by frame. You see, at the end here, the ball, first of all, this magic orb doesn't quite feel dynamic, like from the right side flying to the left, where the second sampler here, the generic result, we see these magic orbs having more dynamic feeling when flying to the left hand, where we are creating more energy, the purple energy in the air, and then the size of the orbs becomes more dynamically sized, going into the palms of the characters. But this one, as the first generated video in the first sampling group, you see it's all going in the same size of this magic orb. And right at the end here, you see the hands are not in the correct direction, or something that can, you know, be done better, like the second samplers. And then also the hands like this look, you know, not quite nice in this part, going in the wrong direction. And then the fingers aren't that nice either. But then... In the second part, the second sampler, we see the transitions here are getting better. And eventually, we have better hands. At least we got some nails on the fingers. And then the palm is facing upward, which makes sense for the character to receive the magic orbs. So therefore, there are some small improvements and little enhancements that help a lot for video generation. And then another step, which is going to be the sound effect. We have talked about the MM audio before. So... What I do is send the newly generated sampler to video, which means this video is going to pass into this group for creating the sound effect. And this is the result of the video with the sound effect. Let's check it out. So we got the sound effect with MM Audio. Of course, if you don't like the sound, you can regenerate that again. So therefore, that's why I have put all the seed numbers as fixed seeds, so that we can manually correct something and then regenerate in particular groups. And that's why I will be doing that in this workflow.
so far, it is doing pretty good for the Skyreel's image to video that I see. And you know, if you want to build AI videos, movies, stories, whichever you call that, like a few minutes or even 10 minutes, 20 minute videos, you can use other AI agents such as the Hugging Face AI Agent Framework, SOMO Agents. You can use something like this to build autonomous working AI agents to create the content, create the video script, and also the text prompts scene by scene to create those video text prompts, all in one workflow. And calling each video scene to ComfyUI where we have the ComfyUI API call, which you can explore the API here. I have talked about those in previous videos, like a long time ago, about a year ago, so this is still... This method is still working, is still able to use ComfyUI as the API server call, doing web requests, creating something based on your workflow you want to create, and the whole thing can be automatically done in a streamlined process with AI agents. Right now, as we are talking about more agency workflows for building, it's not like the old days, like software as a service. Right now, we are even, you know, going further. If we have built our own workflow like this, it is going to be, you know, more productive. Although there are some contents we have to edit, we cannot just fully rely on the AI to build a script or create all the scripts for us like what it does in this showcase, but then when we receive those video scripts or the text prompts generated by the language models or any AI agents, review that, refine that, we can step into the workflow and edit something that we want to do. And therefore, I have recently used DeepSeek R1 to just do a text prompt here, nothing technical, to use the small agents framework and ask the AI to build a workflow for this AI agent to run autonomously. Also, I have covered how to use small agents in other video. You can check that out. So what it does, I have just done an example here. I have not verified if this workflow or this AI agent file is working or not, but at least I see what it does in this coding makes sense. We have imported the small agents agents, also the JSON and the web shortcut for communicating with the comfy UI API call. And then what I have requested is one agent assigned to do a writer, and then the second agent is doing research. This is going to analyze and review what the writer is going to create, do some editing, and approve that script to move on to the video creation. And then the third agent here, it is the creative agent that I call, which is going to use the story, the content, and convert each scene into a video text prompt including descriptions of the screen character, key actions, mood, lighting, and camera angles are going to be considered as well in the creative agent, and then it will stack up the queue in the scenery for the agents to move on to the next steps. Of course, that will be the steps for video agents that I call here to connect with ComfyUI using the WebSocket and calling the ComfyUI API call. Lastly, we will pass the workflow. For example, if for me I have this workflow here, I have to do something to convert it as an API-friendly calling workflow. Instead of having all this control here, sometimes they get in set notes and something like the image load image here. This is mostly for end users who are using ComfyUI. This web UI interface is friendly for that. But if you are using the API, you are going to more likely use the image path to redirect the prompt, which is the workflow JSON files, to redirect those paths as well as you receive the video output. You will want to have this return output in the code. But those are more technical things. You have to do it in a programming way, or if you don't know programming, then you can hire people or use AI Coder to do that for you. So, this is the brief of how I will be using this AI agent to run an agentic workflow autonomously to create whole video stories. As you can see, right at the end of this script, we have the story video workflow and this passes the text prompt area. This one should be what we want to input ourselves. Like by default, this value is set as sci-fi adventure stories, or if you want to do other things, you can type your own text prompt or your video ideas here as well. I have not tested this coding yet, just, you know, based on what I see from programming here, it makes sense. So if something doesn't make sense, Mostly the AI is missing some input parameters that you have to input or the link of the comfy UI URL might need to change. Some minor things like that. So you kind of understand what's going on. So far, I see people talk about Skyreels and their official site, which is here. You can see it's able to craft short dramas from script to screen, which is something similar to the workflow flow that I just mentioned. Using AI agents to autonomously create the whole video script and go scene by scene creating the whole video like that. You can use whatever creativity you have, 
like AI agents, or you can do it manually yourself, write your own script, etc. That is also able to work. And as you can see in their interface here, you can upload your own script or upload your own novel, and then their flow is going to create a script. Let's say I have just created one episode on the top here. Just generate a script by using what they provided randomly here. And it will just see this interface is, you know, having all the loading and generations here. This is at the back end of this system. Actually, this will be something like what you have in communicating with DeepSeek or any language models that it will streamline those texts like what I have here. Exactly, something like that is being done. But then this AI is doing the script creation in this user interface. So what I'm trying to say is that I'm just trying to explore or based on what I see on their website, the Skyreel official website, uncover or we can say reverse engineer what they have here step by step. And we can do that using AI agents, open source, even using our own Comfy UI workflow. And we can create something like that. So for example, at this stage, it's script writing. And then we can move forward to the character. Once we are in the character, we are generating those character images, passing that into the storyboard. And the storyboard, of course, is going to be image to video. That means this Comfy UI video generation is going to take place in that last part. So I see people treating this kind of Comfy UI workflow as a very important part of that. But actually, it's not the main thing to consider. If you, you know, want to build an AI workflow or AI agent workflow, I should say we should take a bigger picture of how we can do something like that without just narrowing down your vision, just focusing on the comfy UI workflow itself. Rather than that, we should see the bigger picture of how we can build a whole system like this using AI agents autonomously and combining different components like language models. We have the vision models to convert from image to text and also having the video diffusion model like the sky reels to generate image to video. This is just a little part of the process for the comfy UI workflow to take place in. If we look at the whole big picture of a system to create something to build something, so I guess we should not just, you know, have such a narrow vision. It's not really the matter of the whole concept of how you want to make something. Well, you can replace it. If one day we have something better AI models, we can replace this drop down menu to select other AI models. Right. So for me, it really doesn't matter. You know, the matter of the thing is how you can adapt yourself to creating the whole workflow as a whole picture and how you make those stuff work efficiently. So it kind of off topic at this last part, if compared with a normal YouTube tutorial video, but well, kind of my own opinion on how to do stuff rather than just focus on the comfy UI workflow, how you animate stuff, etc. So that is it for this video. Hope this inspires you guys and I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.